I hope to create a situation where people find meaning and associations to not just individual objects, but maybe some of the ways that they relate. In common, time refers to the number of characters in one of your new works, but it's also a common uh, time signature. And uh, in some way, that implies endless repetition, which opens your series to something infinite like a human's unlimited assertion of self. So tell me about In Common Time as a concept and what were your first ideas, influences, or expectations? I came across the concept of In Common Time thinking about music and um, the 4-4 four, four beat, the sort of the rhythm of it, and was already making some drawings with four elements. And it seemed like it was a very good fit. And absolutely, yes, there is that sort of infinite collecting where I will go to the computer or go online and sort of find images that I find interesting. So they began as compositions of four and then they grew from there. Well, two things you mentioned were breaking the formula and um, lengthening the looking. Explain how those are of interest. My intention with working on Canvas again was to come up with a new way of using the same material, the same subject matter, but not relying on the same structure and recipe or formula to get to those images. And through that process, I think I've spent a lot more time looking at the paintings, living with them, and hopefully creating more nuanced surfaces. So it wouldn't have happened if you would have stayed on paper? I don't think so, not in the same way. I do love going back and forth between the two ways of working because I love just, I know that I'm gonna do this step and this step and this step and these results are going to kind of come out of that. And I love the newness of the canvas works. So lengthening the looking is about the relationships of the uh, each piece of the puzzle? With the paintings, for sure, yes, yeah. I think that um, also there's just the, a kind of different feeling of working on something horizontally for the majority of the time. And of course I would lift it up and think about it, but that has been really interesting to think about how I develop images. Just been really enjoyable. Something I read recently reminded me of your work. Artist Roger Brown said, I'm very interested in simplifying and making a painting easy to read reducing a form so that you can repeat it over and over again, continually adding more forms and getting more complex as you go along. Simplicity and complexity, how does that relate to your work? Well, I've been collecting images uh, really since I was a kid. Now that everything or many things are online and my files on my desktop are filled with collected images and I then draw those images, redrawing, bringing them back into the computer and simplification happens through that process where a head or a figure or an object changes from its photographic source to my line drawing of that. And then as I take it back into Photoshop, it changes again as I may do different filters to it or cut it apart. And then repetition is a big part of how I work with these images. In this body of work, there are many images repeated and Oftentimes I will work with a small set of images that then almost become like a cast of characters. I think the repetition reminds me of a modern composer, the way that something infinite becomes drone-like or meditative. I listen to a lot of minimalist music in the studio and I find that I really connect with the sort of rhythms and patterns that are created with the positive and negative shapes or um, this object has a circle in it and that sort of relates to some shape or uh, positive negative shape in some other object. I just find that wonderful to sort of piece these things together. So I wanted to make sure that we talked a little bit more about the process of borrowing, reusing, and adapting. Did, you already touched on it a bit, but would you go a little further? Well, I, 
have always loved going back to sort of pop art or the way that consumer objects find their way into artworks. I began collecting intensely um, during a time when Tumblr was a prominent website where there was microblogs and people would upload lots of different images. And I found they really just had, they were the kinds of things that I wanted to draw. And now I see a kind of advertising image or clip art that again has a sort of emptiness or a light touch that you can sort of redraw, mix and match, um, fold into things. Oftentimes they still carry a bit of their previous meanings, but then they're next to some other object and a new association might happen. So I find just that I love the common images that seem to surround us as we're scrolling or walking around the world. I wondered about that, about if uh, retaining the vulnerability of the sources was important, because I imagine that is singular, or is it more about the universal uh, way that we're all subject to urges and impulses? I hope I more go towards the universal appeal, I think, of some of these objects and images. I think as we look at art and visual culture, advertising, illustration, or eBay searches, we all have certain nostalgia or thinking about certain objects. I hope to create a situation where people find meaning and associations to not just individual objects, but maybe some of the ways that they relate. Yeah, I know you and I have talked and said that our similar age, we feel like sometimes the last generation to observe the before and operated through the dominance of technology. So if it's true, does it mean, do you think that uh, an artist of this era, our era, is holding a golden ticket of unique perspective? Or, or does that somehow leave us out and behind a world that we'll never fully inhabit? I do think it's very fascinating to be in the moment where you can remember an analog world. Now it's just normal that, you know, you're sort of toggling back and forth between an online life, a digital life, and an analog life. I remember being an artist before Instagram. In fact, I think that Instagram made a huge impact on the kind of access that I have to the art world. So yeah, I think even within the digital age, there's been a lot of changes. And that's what we've always talked about too, is we wonder if every generation has the same feeling or will the feeling increase or... We feel like we've got a foot in either territory. But at some point, maybe you could see that someone that came after us, your daughter, or you know, your daughter's daughter might not remember that world. But inevitably it comes down to, are we tethered or set free by choice? Got it. And identity and uh, other double binds that are created by the groups that we choose to identify with. So are, are, are we actually being set free or are we setting it, our, our contradictions in, in stone? Yeah. I, I think, to be hopeful would be to be set free, but I'm not sure that that is true. I think that the structures of that world I feel often very tethered by, and I think that it leads to a lot of questioning. I think that the way that we interact with the algorithms, the way that they interact with us, the way that these apps affect us deeply, I find to be both exciting. I mean, I met you through social media. And I think that that is something that is extremely special. And yet, I find that social media eats at me in a way that I find not productive. So it is both. I always thought that your characters are set free somehow by being uh, reimagined or recontextualized. I believe that that is also a great hope. That <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... Uh, uh, a sort of thing that I was able to unlock was that I could remove things from their context and piece them all back together and something new and engaging was created. And I do think that that is through the digital world that that came to be. I had this last rewording of something we said yesterday 
Tell me if it uh, speaks to you. We are unique, we are not unique. Our concept of a unique outside is driven by an inevitable, similar, same set of inside attributes. I don't feel unique. I think that that is something that is maybe both painful about our digital lives and special. I think that, um, that seeing just the vastness of uh, creators and thinkers and people that are doing their crazy thing online. And yet we was, must come to our studios and work individually and create unique individual objects. Not sure that's an answer to that. <laughs> cool. That's a perfect answer. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Yeah. It's, uh, so great to have you here in the studio.